Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. My email is still tmosso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms, please reach out to me directly. I am tmosso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a 2015 update of a 2006 classic. This is the Alango Unzona Datagraph Perpetual. The first Datagraph Perpetual came out in 2000. This one with updates came out in 2015. The most obvious change right off the bat is that this is an all-stick index dial with none of the Roman numerals of the previous model. 41 millimeters in diameter in white gold, really gray gold, more on that in a moment. The watch measures 14.5 millimeters thick and from lug tip to lug tip, the total distance across the wrist is 50.6 millimeters with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. I'll pull back my sleeve and show you this watch as it sits on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. It sits nicely, but being just over 50 millimeters lug to lug, you don't want to wear this watch on a wrist much smaller than mine. Let's say 15 centimeters circumference is going to be the lower limit. Now, it does sit lower on the wrist than you'd think because of the inset case back. It's, it's stepped back from the edge, and you can see the domed bezel starts pretty low on the case band, so we'll slide underneath most dress cuffs. I wouldn't worry about it getting hung up. The strap is a large rectangular scale alligator leather, black semi-gloss. There's some bolstering or stuffing to add volume, a monotone stitch, a folded edge. There's calfskin on the back. You can see this is a Longa factory strap in brand new condition. And then we have a Longa white gold pin buckle that has two unique features. I always like to call this out. If you're familiar with my Longa reviews, cut forward 30 seconds. If not, watch this. Taking a look, you can see that the bridge is elevated over the prongs. So here's a prong, here's a prong, here's the bridge. The bridge is elevated, so this strap sits flush inside the buckle rather than stacking up and adding height on the wrist. Also, there's this little retaining bar built in. So if you're like me and you tend to use the smallest hole because you have the smallest wrist or you even punch a smaller hole to make it fit, you know that a tightly strapped watch can get pinned on the pin. And that little retaining bar prevents the strap from sinking too low on the pin, making it easier to remove a tightly strapped watch on a small wrist. This is gray gold which is white gold that's white all the way through. It's 18 karat white gold. It never needs to be rhodium plated. If you scratch it, it's the same color underneath. It's what JLC, Rolex, Patek, Grubel 4C, and many other top brands use. It's the good stuff as far as white gold is concerned. It's a traditional longa case with a domed bezel. It has a very short vertical lip. The mid case is vertical with a longitudinal satin finish between the case back and the bezel. You can see the pusher for the calendar has a combination of polish and set nation for contrast. The lugs are stepped out rather dramatically from the case band. That's been a feature of longer watches since the first modern models debuted in 1994. The lugs have a little soft bevel on their side that expands as you move towards the case. And then we have pushers, much like the calendar adjuster. These are for the chronograph. You can also see little dimples that are used for adjusting the calendar individual indications. More on that in a moment. We have a longer branded chronograph crown and you can see the watch does have hacking or stop seconds. What the watch also has is instantaneous jumping minutes and a flyback function so you can reset and restart without first having to stop, which allows you to time things that occur in rapid succession. We'll take a quick look at this watch, which has perhaps more loom than you would expect for a dress watch. But then the, again, this is a fairly sporty dress watch with the tachymeter scale for gauging the speed of a plane or a race car, the flyback chronograph, and of course the fact that it is loomed. Now, the dial is made of sterling silver, so it has this galvanic coating that darkens it with a lovely nickel anthracite coating that's either dark rhodium or possibly ruthenium, and you can see white gold hands indices as well as frame for the date. Just know that the dial blank itself is a disc of sterling silver. The moon phase is a disc of white gold. At Longa, moon phase discs are always made out of gold, and they have a 122-year adjustment interval. Again, this is above and beyond because the perpetual calendar is able to deal with leap years and irregular length months until the year 2100. So the moon phase actually outlasts the perpetual calendar, which in the year 2100 will have to be corrected at the factory. But until then, it can deal with all the quirks of the Gregorian calendar. We have our moon phase. We have our panorama datum, a longtime signature of Longa. We have our running seconds. AM, PM indicator, that's your day-night indicator with the little blue arc being the night. And then we have our week 
day and our month and our leap year phase right there. We also have a rather clever system that allows you to adjust all of these in sync. Let's say the watch stops. It's got a 36 hour power reserve. So if you put it down for two days, it's going to be dead. Well, you pull the crown out and that engages the quick set mechanism. Now watch the days, watch the date and watch the moon phase. You can see all of them are moving here. So if you know that your watch has fallen behind four days, go one, two, three, four, and everything is now caught up. Wind the watch, set the time, you're right back up to speed. No need to use the pushers or look up the current phase of the moon. And this only works when the crown is withdrawn. So this is the only way it's going to operate. When the crown is not withdrawn, the system is blocked. And of course, you can always use the individual pushers to set the calendar, as long as that little cheese wedge right there is not pointing to the blue semicircle that indicates nighttime hours. So you know, for example, right here, that you are looking at eight in the morning because the little cheese wedge or the index is pointing to the open side of its circuit. Flip it all over, caliber L9521, based on the datagraph L951. On the back, the two movements are indistinguishable as all the perpetual calendar elements are on the dial side. It's protected down to 30 meters. It features a balance that is primarily free sprung. As you can see, there is a swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism, but all of the timing changes, for the most part, are going to be done using the variable inertia bolts on the balance rim. So it is very precisely adjusted in a chronometer style five positions and the free sprung architecture also gives it better stability against shock. Now it's a big slow beating balance wheel making up in mass and inertia what it lacks in beat rate. It's beaten away at 18,000 vibrations per hour like a grand old pocket watch. You can see we've got a combination of a column wheel function selector and a lateral clutch beautifully executed instantaneous jumping minutes. We have an overcoil hairspring which means in every position with a more centered mass than a flat hairspring and overcoil ensures that the watch will keep consistent time and be relatively indifferent to position. You can see all of this pivots on 45 joules, and you'll appreciate that we have lots of black polished steel here. Everything that turns black as I tilt the watch is black polished mirror finished steel finished with lapping paper, diamond paste, or zinc plate. You can also see that we have both polished screws and blued screws, which are fired blue in a kiln to turn them that color. We have German silver bridges and plates with the nickel copper zinc alloy, what we call German silver, making up the largest components of the movement. And that's where that golden tone comes from. It is the copper content. You can also see that both the steel components of the chronograph and the brass components of the time telling movement. Uh, those are all mirror beveled or anglage surfaced on their side. I really need to note the German word for that because this watch is made in the state of Saxony in Glasuta. We have stripes across the bridges. We have engine turning on the base plate and then a longest signature the use of a freehand engraved balance cock. So no two of these are exactly alike. And then all the steel components feature satination across their tops. And in a loving nod to the pocket watch era, you can see quite a few pivot jewels, including on the chronograph clutch, have been set in golden chiton, which are then themselves fixed in place using screws, a nod to the era when it was very difficult to press jewels precisely. So the precision chiton would be cut, the jewel pressed, and then placed into its cradle in a slot held in place by screws. So that's why that's here. It's a nod to antiquity. It's not necessary today, but Longa is all about reminiscing about the past. There's a lovely snailing on the bridge for the escapement just below the balance, which is a wonderful piece of attention to details. That's an overlooked component on even many high horology watches. This watch with world-class column wheel feel, you really feel and hear the action on Dotograph. If you love this watch, reach out to me. I am Tim also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.